The island we call home, the only place we'll ever get to call home, has been handed over to the world. An island that has not been invaded in 955 years. Even the mighty Spanish Armada and Hitler's war machine didn't make it to our shores. And now it has been casually gifted away on a silver platter. Just like that. Globalist politicians, whose only interest is themselves and their billionaire masters, promise to wrestle back control of our borders in return for our votes. On receiving those votes, they broke that promise as if they'd never made it. Yet still, they prosper in power and will never have to answer for their high treason. More fool us for thinking they were ever interested in what us peasants think. They, along with the capitalist bosses, whose only interest is cheap labour, have changed our country beyond all repair. And let's not forget the disingenuous left-wing do-gooders who despise the idea of us having a nation and flag. They have also played a massive part in this. We are an island that, in truth, has always seen relatively small numbers of people come here and be absorbed. True, some integrate better than others. Many are now so well integrated that only the most ardent nationalist or white supremacist would question their Britishness. No one objects to sensible numbers of people from certain places coming here. Certain places are preferable to others, but it can never be at the expense of those already here. But that is exactly what is happening, and it has all been done by a mixture of nefarious design and complete indifference. As well as being told their opinions are worthless, the British people have also been told they should stop referring to this as their island, as it does not, and never did, belong to them. Apparently, countless centuries of history that have shaped these isles mean absolutely nothing. Borders and nations are bad, though that only seems to be the case when we have them. We've heard it all before when they scream, no human is illegal. The reality is, borders are vital because millions of people want to move here or cannot be allowed to. But still, we're told we must open our borders and share our land with the entire world. The fact we already have a population of 67 million crammed into a tiny landmass of over 243,000 square kilometres is immaterial. Compare that to Canada, which has a population of 37 million in an area of nearly 10 million square kilometres. There is no comparison. This year saw the highest increase ever with over 500,000 people coming. And that's only the ones we know about. Next year's numbers bear not thinking about. Still, we are criticised for not opening the borders wide enough. To say this country is full is a lie, the socialists utter, as if overpopulation is a noble goal to aim for. When will we be full? 10 million more? 50 million more? Can we never be full? They will never answer those questions. The truth is, they'll only say it's enough once British culture and customs are all but wiped off the face of the earth. Gone. Resigned to the dustbin of history. That was always the aim of open borders for them. So much hatred and self-loathing is why anyone waving our national flag is now condemned as a racist. Funnily enough, I never hear those same people say that about the countless Pakistan, Iran or Saudi Arabia flags I've seen be waved in my city centre after some big event has happened there. The negative effects of mass immigration are deliberately ignored. Apparently, there are only upsides. Tell that to the common people who bear the brunt of it. The immense pressure placed on our infrastructure is ignored. The lack of school places and doctors and dentists appointments get brushed under the carpet. People who have paid taxes all their lives working every hour God sends, told they are not entitled to any of that or affordable housing. To add insult to injury, the small print says, by the way, you aren't allowed those things, but the immigrants who arrived yesterday are, and you'll be paying for them. The lack of housing is blamed on not building enough houses, as if it should be our obligation to build millions of houses and pave over our green and pleasant land sticking a middle finger up at our wildlife because half the world has now decided they want the land. No one dares say too many people is a bigger issue than not enough houses. And that's before we get onto the fact we are spending seven million a day on hotels for grown men who make the illegal crossing on boats. 
That and the fact that many who come have no interest in respecting our culture or following our laws and customs. As a consequence, we now see many of our towns and cities turned into foreign colonies. Places once quintessentially British are now nothing more than foreign colonies full of Eastern European shops where women are no longer safe and crime stats are through the roof. Of course, to point all this out is condemned as racist and xenophobic, another tactic to shut us up. I would argue the real racists are the ones who laugh and there is no shortage of them here and abroad when they hear mass immigration is destroying Britain. Of course, their answer is we deserve it for our colonialist past. Well, at least they are now admitting it's a bad thing. That's a start.